Well, we're still in the middle of the uh, coronavirus pandemic, and that is significantly changing the way that pastors relate to their congregations. Uh, We are having to do things way differently than we were just a few weeks ago, and it's created all kinds of challenges. Our elders, the last physical meeting we had, we actually sat in a large room six, seven feet away from each other Mm -hmm. uh, in a circle so that we could try to begin to implement what was just at that time being told us about social distancing. Since that time, we've met on uh, uh, Zoom calls, and we have been emailing and texting back and forth to stay in communication. We've implemented some things in order to try to shepherd the flock to the best of our ability. And we know that we, we're not able to do what we want to do, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't do anything. So we must do what mm-hmm. we can do while we're unable to do what we would love to do. Yeah, I would tell pastors, you actually, hopefully this is highlighting just how significant what you do is. And uh, people are starting to think about governmental authority, and therefore you're forced to think about ecclesiastical authority. And what you do is remarkably significant. The decisions you make are mm-hmm. remarkably significant. And so you, you uh, I would qu- think quickly, you have, the, you have the category of meetings, Do we assemble, not assemble? How do we assemble once we start to reassemble? And then you have the shepherding function. Um, Those are two ways my mind is currently processing our situation. How do we shepherd regardless of what you do with meetings? How do you shepherd during this time? So on the shepherding front, um, we don't normally do this with our elders, but we have divided up our congregation. So one elder is assigned a certain number of members. So every member has one elder and then we've made contacts. That was very refreshing. And I, I would recommend that uh, just to make sure you're having a conversation because it's immediately going to help you see the different scenarios that your people are in. And this, this is, I was surprised by how many different circumstances each um, of our people were facing, depending on if they're older and retired or if they're right in the middle of work life or if some of their people in their family have certain underlying medical conditions that make them more susceptible. Um, so that's one, one thing we've done. A lot of communications through email, a lot of communications, even through video, we have, we have started to develop that. On the whether you meet uh, front, um, we did not meet last Sunday. We're taking this week by week. And one of the things we're starting to see is that whenever, when we do reassemble, um, that we're going to have to think about it because the virus is probably still going to be around. It's going to be around for a while. And we're going to have to think about how we encourage folks that are at a higher risk um, as they think about whether to assemble or not. Right. Yeah. And that those are uh, challenging issues. And then what do you do on the Lord's Day when you don't assemble? Well, we've got friends that have live stream. They just went up to the building and put on, uh, I don't want to say put on a service, but they maybe assembled a handful of folks and had worship there and then live streamed it so that folks could watch it at home. We did that the first week when we told more of our people to stay home if they were in risk categories and we had less than half of what we normally have. This last Sunday, however, we chose not to do that. And, and one of the main reasons we chose not to do it is because of the fear that people will begin to fall into a way of thinking that they can worship online, that they can go to church online, that they can do church online. All of those phrases have been used by Christian leaders saying, we're just going to do church online today. Well, when you do that, you begin to undermine what the Bible says about the church and what the church is, how the church is to operate. And we want to guard against that. That doesn't mean we won't do it because we, we had a lot of discussion about it. We may do that uh, going forward, but the brothers who in churches who have done that, that have talked to me, have all said, we are making a very important point to our congregation. Look, th- you can't do church online. You, you can't worship online the way that God's called us to worship. These can be aids that you use. So what we did is uh, we have sent out more than a couple, I think two or three different times, we've sent out emails to our folks saying, here's an outline or here's some material to read together in your home. Uh, here's some things you can pray for. Here are some songs that you can access and listen to and sing along mm-hmm. with that are recorded for you on the internet. But we're Worship in your home. That's what we did yesterday. We, I think we linked to a couple of uh, old sermons from our own church website. We've got a pretty good backload of sermons there, backlog of sermons, and folks did that. That's fine. Technology is great. Let's use technology, but let's don't inadvertently let technology begin to dictate what church is, how church life is to operate. We, we have a book. The Bible is very clear about what a church is and how we're to function, and we don't want to unwittingly undermine that. That's been a big concern. Another thing we've done 
is we've surveyed our folks to see who has needs and then who has opportunity to, to meet those needs. Because right now, a lot of our young people are out of school. Uh, a lot of them are out of work. And people that are healthy can go to the grocery stores and make grocery runs, grocery store runs, or go pick up medicines or take folks to doctor's appointments from, with the population in our church that, that wouldn't be so wise to go and do those things on their own. So connecting that and then connecting with the community. So we put that out through different media uh, that we have access to here in Cape Coral saying, look, we got folks that are healthy, that are willing to help you. If you need groceries, we can go get them for you. If you need supplies, we can help with that. If you need medical assistance, then we can connect you with medical people in the community as well. Those are some ways that we have tried to pastor through this pandemic. Yeah, this is a time I would encourage pastors to be fully engaged you know, I mean, if you think about the U.S. government and they're staying up late till three in the morning to figure out what kind of legislation they're going to do, right. um, it, it'd be easy as a pastor to think, well, I need to stay in my lane. Well, yes, <laughs> while there is a lane for a pastor, right? I mean, I'm not going to go tell my mechanic exactly how to tighten the bolts. Uh, there is a sense of pastors need to be generalist. You are to shepherd your people through everything that they experience and use wisdom in that. So, but but they're going to have all kinds of challenges, and mm. they they will be looking to you. So you need to communicate to them. Um, you need to shepherd those who are going to be given to panic, and you need to be shepherd shepherd those who are going to be given to you know minimize all this thing and just say it's all foolish. And you know, uh, there's there is going to be a ton of work to do in in the immediate um, and in the long term here, and remind people that there's a God in heaven. They're going to yeah. be looking to you about how to pray and how to trust God during this time. But this is a time to be communicating to your people. Yeah, and and, and that does raise one more important specter: is we have time right now to pray. And we ought to be praying. Man, pray through your church roster. You know, get, get your church directory in front of you. Pray for the people uh, in that directory. Pastors are to be giving themselves to the ministry of the word and prayer anyway. And so right now, when we can't do some other things, let's not waste time and neglect that primary responsibility of praying for your people. Call them on the phone. Pray with them on the phone. You can do that. Yep. Just say, hey, how can I pray for you right now? And, and carry on our ministry the best we can under the limitations that have been imposed. Shoot us an email. Um, you go to founders.org and send us an email. If you're interested in perhaps getting some more of our communications, we've posted up some of our communications mm-hmm. on the Internet, but we've had other communications with our church that we might be able to share right. as just as models. If you think, what have you been saying? What have you not been saying? Tom is extremely gifted at that. been doing it for a long time of knowing how to kind of be steady and give good guidance in challenging times. For fan members, you can contact uh, us directly through the Armory. And for others, you can email founders.org. We'll try to get back to you as we're able.